Hello everyone, how's it going? I'm Jared, I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska. I've been editing some photos. I thought I would show you the adaptive presets for both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. It's a new update. I thought it was a gimmick at first, and instead I found myself using it quite a bit. So let's do this. Let's look at some photos and how adaptive presets can actually help. We're in Lightroom Classic. It exists for both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. You'll find it under wherever you have your presets. So if we have this photo, which was taken like 17 years ago, believe it or not, the old Canon 20D. If we go over here to develop, you'll find the adaptive presets over here under adaptive. So we have sky and subject. For a lot of my landscape photographs, I've started using these adaptive filters to enhance the skies with one click to kind of get a, a sense for what the sky might look like with some edits. And sometimes I just keep the adaptive filter and just use that. So we're gonna click on the adaptive filter right there. And you can see that we have blue, dark, neon, storm clouds, sunrise and sunset. And if you just hover over the cursor on each one, it's going to mask the sky. So it's basically using AI to look for the sky, select it, and then apply a, a preset to it. So this one really darkens the sky. You go to dark drama even more. Neon changes the color of the sky a little bit. Storm clouds, sunrise, changes the colors quite a bit, changes some other settings and sunset. Now what has ha what is happening for each one of these is that Lightroom is creating a mask. So if I click on blue drama, Lightroom is taking it, it's selecting the sky and it's creating a mask. And we can find that mask over here under the masking tool right there. And I don't know why that popped up on the other screen, but here it is. And we could see the blue drama selected the sky right there. And if you wanted to see what the, presets actually are, you can just click on it and see what uh, the Adobe team has selected to be those presets. You can adjust these right here so I can warm up my sky. Holy cow, nuclear bomb. Um, let's not do that. We can adjust some things. Another thing that's kind of powerful is that you can take the whole filter and change the impact of that filter just by going over here, over, over here under the presets and then going onto that preset that we had selected and going on the amount to zero or to 200. So 100 is the default amount for the preset. Zero means nothing is applied at all. So that's really nice that they added this. It, it adds some power to, for us to be able to quickly use one of the adapter presets and then adjust it just within a few moments to get the look and feel that we want. Let's go to another image real quick and let's go and see what these look like. That's pretty cool. That's pretty sweet. Um, dark drama, neon, storm clouds. And if we just go off and back on, you can kind of see the effect of that. So I like blue drama right there. I'm going to select that. I'm going to lower the amount just a little bit. And I think that looks pretty good. So if we started with that. That's just a nice quick touch that didn't uh, select the, you know, the land at all. It just applied the preset to the sky. And then once I'm off that, once I'm removed from the preset, I could go and adjust the entire photograph so we could warm that image up just a little bit. I think that's a pretty cool photo. If I started there within a few clicks, that's a lot better. The sky's more dramatic. Everything looks a little bit more natural. It's pretty cool. Let's do another one. Let's do my Windows screensaver. This looks exactly like the Windows 98 thing, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. Found this out in the middle of Nebraska, just a field. And I took like 400 photos of the sky, and they're all just pretty much the same photo. But it was so beautiful, I didn't care. I still have those somewhere. And let's go over here to the Adaptive Sky again. Blue Drama. Wow, that is very dramatic, probably a little bit too much. Let's try storm clouds. Oh, wow, so that's the before and that's after. That's almost perfect. That looks pretty sweet. I can just click that and be done. That looks great. That's one of the things I like about the adaptive filters is that it's easy to take these photos and enhance them very, very quickly. And most of the time, for a lot of the photographs, it does an excellent job. Very complicated situations with a lot of trees and a lot of sky. Like if there's a lot of trees and a lot of spaces in trees, it doesn't do that great. It, 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 it struggles sometimes to find the, the, you know, the spaces between the tree and the sky. But I think generally for the most part, if you know, if you start using them and you start to get used to them, you're going to have some fun using them. Let's go to some portraits. We're going to go to some portraits and check them out. We're going to develop. And instead of adaptive sky, this time we're going to use adaptive subject. It's going to try to find the people or the subject. It could be a car. It could be a house. It could be a barn, something like that. 
and it's going to an animal. It's going to try to uh, put some presets in there. So we're going to go to pop, and it's detecting. Oh, yeah, look at that. It detected both subjects, and it lightened them both up. That's really cool. Uh, we have warm pop, which just warms that up. Soft, which probably takes the texture down, I'm thinking. So if we zoom into his face and we do the soft, you see how that totally took the texture down a little bit. That's pretty cool. Cool, soft, warm, just a little bit more blue, vibrant, and then glow. I don't like glow that much. Glow might be something to mess with and, and change the levels to. Let's try another one. Let's just try her by herself. Pop. Oh, that's a great mask. Great. Let's try cool, soft, and let's try vibrant, and then glow. Eh, my favorite is pop. That looks great. That's uh, before and after. Oh, that's too much right there. That looks pretty good. Let's try. Um, let's try another one. Let's try Dre, and we're gonna go pop. It found him pretty quick. It really helped. That did a good job. You know, adaptive presets are a great way to see if, like, with one click, to do all the work for you to see what a little bit different of an edit is like. And then you either, you can like it and keep it. Like, I, th I think I should have done this to Dre when I first took the photo. That is supposedly already edited, but I like the pop. So I would just apply this and keep it. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. Something like this, uh, let's, let's, let's look at this. Because in a sequence of photos... One of the cool things that they added is the ability to copy and paste masks. So if we go to this portrait right here and we zoom in, let's go to her face and we apply the soft filter. You see how it softened her skin up a little bit? Let's say we like that a lot. Um, and then let's go out. What you can do is you can do shift, command or control C. And now we have the ability to choose masking as a copy. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go over here to this one and I'm gonna go shift command or control V. It's going to take that and it's gonna apply the same auto mask to a new photo. So it's not gonna do the exact same mask as the other one because the new photo is different, but it's gonna take the subject, auto detect it, and then take the settings and apply those to that mask. So you could look at this and, uh, oops, gosh, I keep zooming out. I got a new keyboard, so I'm struggling with the keys. And we could see what the effect of that mask was. You can go over here to the masks and we can turn it on and off. So it softened it a little bit. Softened it just as much as we did the, the other one. That's pretty cool. Another thing you could do is mix and match these. So if we go to a portrait like this, I have both a sky and I have some subjects. So we're going to go to pop on the subjects. It popped them out a little bit, right? You can see the before and after. So it selected them. Then let's go to the adaptive sky and do some blue drama. And that's excellent. So I'm just going to click that. And that's the before and after. With just a couple clicks, I was able to take them, brighten them up, and darken the sky and create a better photograph. And then I could uh, copy these. So I'm going to do shift, shift, command, C. I could copy this and I could put the blue drama in there too. I could copy this, and let's say I had 10 more images of them in a similar situation. I could apply it, and it's going to create a new mask for each photo separately. So it's not going to, it's going to copy this exact mask and just paste it over the other ones. It's going to intelligently look for the subjects in new photographs and apply the same settings, which I think is pretty amazing. So adaptive filters is one of those things I didn't expect to enjoy and to use very often, but I found myself using them every day. Hopefully you like them. Check them out. Uh, if you have any kind of comments or suggestions or questions, throw them below. More than anything, I really want to help people love photography as much as I do. I love photography. I love editing. I love the whole package. I think about it all the time. So if you, And I love helping people. So if you have any questions, let me know. But otherwise, have a great, great day. Go have some fun editing photographs.